Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, I'm going to take you through designing and making the string spacer that is fitted to Brian May's Red Special guitar. This isn't a nut, and it isn't a material that nuts are usually made from, such as bone, plastic, graphite, solid surface mineral, or brass. It is relatively well known that the Red Special is fitted with a zero fret, and for this reason, it doesn't have a traditional nut. I made a video in April 2024 which covered the reasons why zero frets wear, particularly on guitars fitted with a tremolo system, and I demonstrated removing and replacing it with stainless steel fret wire on my Burns Red Special replica. However, I didn't discuss the advantages of a zero fret and string spacer, so I'll talk about those before moving on to how I design the object and then making one from Bakelite and a similar alternative material which is easier to source and work. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting, and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Several prominent Luthiers websites cover zero frets, including Filed Guitars in the UK and Hayes Guitars in the Republic of Ireland. Holding the string in a closely fitting nut slot affects the string's vibration and exaggerates end effects, which are one reason for intonation difficulties, particularly on the higher tension strings. The end effects are different for each string, and also for different partial frequencies within the same note. This is called inharmonicity, where all the different partial frequencies within a note are not quite in tune with each other. Allowing the open string to rest gently against a fret without being constrained in a tight slot minimizes these end effects and reduces the need for intonation correction at the saddle. Although zero frets have been fitted to budget guitars, they are not a shortcut. The angles of the strings over the zero fret need to be similar to the angles produced by finger pressure behind any other fret, and the slots in the string guide must be shaped and smoothed to aid easy tuning. It is very important that the zero fret is at the correct height for proper string clearance. The string spacer on Brian May's Red Special is made from mottled brown bakelite, which is a phenolic resin used in the early to mid 20th century to make numerous household items that are made from plastic these days. The string spacers on the commercial Burns and BMG special guitars are made from black plastic, possibly nylon. Bakelite is brittle and can easily chip, crack or shatter if subjected to impact and when filing the string slots, which I'll illustrate later in this video. In this section, I'll talk you through how I derived the dimensions of the Bakelite string spacer. The width is the same as the neck at the zero fret, so 1 and 13 16th of an inch or 46 millimeters. I don't know the height or thickness, so I have inferred these dimensions. Bakelite sheet is typically an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters thick, but examining photographs of the guitar, it appears to be thicker to my eye. I've bought numerous Bakelite items to make string spaces from, and I find that some sections increase in thickness to five over 32 of an inch or four millimeters. And this fits better with the proportions I observe on the Red Special, so that's what I went with on my replica guitar build. I estimate that the height of the string spacer is derived from the sum of the fretboard thickness at the crown, plus the zero fret crown height, plus the thickness of the lower E string, and I'm showing you those measurements on the screen now. The roundovers from the upper surface to the sides are also a matter of judgement, and I've settled on 9 over 64 or 3.6 millimetres. The front face has a slot milled into it to accommodate the acrylic truss rod adjuster cover. This might be the full thickness of the Bakelite, but I only mill it 1 16th of an inch deep. Setting the bass and treble E string slots to be 1 8th inch from the fretboard sides, which is typical, leaves a string space in of 5 16th of an inch or 8 millimeters. The slot widths and depths are also a matter of judgment to some extent, but I'll approach this logically. In Premier Guitar's rig rundown video, you can clearly see that the strings on each half of the headstock are pulled to the outer edges of the slots by the tuning heads, but there's no reason to position the slots off-center for the 5 16th inch string spacing. Brian confirms that all the strings are floating, that is, not contacting the bottom of the slot, so the slot depth only needs to be sufficient to accommodate the string break angle from the crown of the zero fret to the tuning head without contact. The slots were probably fashioned with needle files, and only need to be wide enough to allow some clearance to Brian's preferred string set with diameters from 9 to 42 thousandths of an inch. With the design details covered, now let's move on to talk about material selection, then I'll show you how I approached making the string spacer. 
As I mentioned earlier, I've bought numerous Bakelite items to make string spacers from over the years, and these are readily available on internet auction sites and from antiques and collectibles markets. I try to avoid cannibalising attractive items in good condition, which are of interest to people who appreciate their vintage appeal and historical value. This case is from an Ormond Bakelite hairdryer, and has sections which are around one eighth of an inch thick, and has some thicker sections on the lid and base. This rather nice box falls into the category of too good to cut up, so I've kept it for storing spare parts for my guitars in. Rather than buying vintage Bakelite items, hoping that there are sections with acceptable thickness, then cutting them into pieces, a good alternative material with similar material properties is brown phenolic resin sheet. You'll see this advertised for sale with names such as Tufnol or Paxilin, and it's readily available in various sheet thicknesses. This particular section is 4mm thick. In the next section of the video, I'll demonstrate CNC cutting string spacers from the reddish brown mottled bake like material, which has a similar appearance to the item on the original red special and the phenolic resin sheet that I've just showed you. The string spacer should be relatively easy to make by hand with a rotary multi tool and abrasive paper, but regular viewers will appreciate that I use CNC as much as possible in my work. Learning and refining CAD, CAM and CNC skills has been as much of a hobby for me as making and modifying guitars. It isn't an approach I would advocate unless you have a particular interest in this area. I generally use 3M brand thin double-sided adhesive tape for holding down workpieces on the MDF spoil board, but this Bakelite string spacer is towards the end of the size limit where this method is successful. I choose tungsten carbide cutters, and my approach here is to deploy a 2mm diameter single flute end mill for cutting the outline and rebate. I then switch to a 0.8mm two flute end mill to mill the string slots. The flute length on these small diameter cutters isn't normally greater than 2mm, which would only allow a partial cut requiring the slot to be filed out manually. However, partway through making the items for this video, I found a supplier selling 0.8mm diameter two flute cutters with a flute length of 5mm. Based on previous experience, I didn't expect these fragile items to survive cutting hard bakelite, so I reduced the feed rates to a very conservative 300mm a minute, and this worked, as you can see from this sequence. As I show you the finished product, I'll point out that the thickness of the section of Bakelite that I milled this item from is closer to 3 16th of an inch or 4.8 millimeters, and does appear to be slightly thicker than the string spacer on the original Red Special. Next I'll illustrate forming the string slots manually using a set of Stumac nut slotting files, and I'll share a tip if you're using this more traditional method. Obviously I've calculated the string spacing using CAD software, but Stumac offer this string spacing ruler if you're approaching this completely by hand. Instructions for use are etched on the surface. If you're making the string spacer from Bakelite and filing the string slots manually using serrated needle files or these rounded profile fret slotting files, there is a significant risk that the front, rear or slot side edges will chip out. This is particularly likely if the file is slightly bent, as some of mine have become. The worst case scenario is that the section to the outside of the base E slot detaches completely, as happened on one piece I was working on. To reduce the likelihood of this occurring, I recommend positioning the item sideways in the vise and supporting it underneath with a piece of wood, rather than clamping the front and rear faces in the vise jaws. In the final section of this video, I'll show you how the phenolic resin sheet mills and cuts in comparison to the Bakelite. In terms of CNC routing, using the same method I illustrated previously, I didn't find much difference using the 2mm diameter single flute end mill and 0.8mm diameter two flute end mill. In contrast to the Bakelite, I found that the phenolic resin sheet did not chip out at all during filing. Given that it's a laminated material, this is perhaps not surprising. In this sequence, I used normal force when filing, because I was generally more confident of success here, even with the bent, thinner file on the narrower slots. I designed all these pieces to be slightly oversized, to allow for final sizing and shaping to fit correctly to the actual fretboard and neck as made. If you need to reduce the overall height and adjust the shape of the radius upper face, you can do this using a radius block and self-adhesive abrasive paper. I'm using foam-backed abrasive strips for final preparation of the cut edge. Well that's all for this video, so I hope you gleaned some useful tips and insights on how to tackle making this intricate part of Brian May's Red Special Guitar. Thank you very much for watching, and please look out for future videos.